Okay, welcome all. Uh, so this is the third meeting of our DSpace 7 uh, Entities Working Group. Um, so, uh, and obviously we're still in the phase of, of sort of analyzing the early prototype and starting to decide what, where to go next. But I thought I would start things off today just as a review of where we are and what our timelines are. So let me see if I can share my screen here so I can kind of walk through this. Okay, and now you should see, be able to see my screen. Can somebody verify that, that you can see the meeting notes for today or the meeting agenda for today? Yes, yeah, sure. Okay. Um, okay, so just as a reminder, I'm going to jump back to the main entities working group page here. As a reminder, um, our deliverables are listed here in the middle of the page. Uh, let me see if I can bump the size up here a little bit in case they're a little bit small. Uh, but we're still on step number one, which is sort of assessing the early prototype um, in alignment with goals. And we've kind of come up with a, a secondary proposal um, for a different way to implement our, the idea of relationships, with on, which is what Andre had proposed at our last meeting. So I just want to note we're still kind of in that phase. We are at nearing the end of September. Uh, so we're slightly behind, but not too bad because we have October to kind of make up as long as we move quickly here. Um, in defining a, a roadmap for how we want to move forward uh, between these two uh, proposals. Um, so what I was thinking we would do today, um, unless there's any objections to this, is as part of the agenda, let me jump back to our agenda here, um, mainly primarily go through this summary document that I had written, uh, which is down here in the middle of the, the second agenda item just because that's where the majority of the comments seem to have been gathered. Um, and we can refer obviously to the other two proposal documents um, as questions come up or if, if we wanna add in some, some more specificity uh, to specific questions that are occurring. Um, but I thought we'd kind of walk through uh, the summary document a little bit together and especially highlighting the questions that have come up in the points and seeing if we can um, uh, kind of clarify things in people's minds a little bit more because uh, I think there are some even some basic ideas that there seems to be some confusion around and maybe it'd be good to get us on the same page on that. Uh, before we jump into that though, is there anything else that anyone wanted to um, try and add on to agen our agenda for today? I'm sure it's going to be a little full, but we can try and make space at the end if there is anything else anyone wants to add. Okay, not hearing anything. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and open up. I think I have that open in another tab here. Um, so here is our, here's the summary document. Let me bump this up just a tad. Um, and the majority of this document was written, <coughs> excuse me. <sighs> Sorry, I still have a little bit of a lingering cough every once in a while. So I'll apologize in advance for that a little bit. Um, so the majority of this document was written by me. There have been areas that, that folks have specifically inserted where they've noted, noted that um, their name as having inserted some content. And I will readily admit that this was based on my own reading of the two proposals. So there may be things that are slightly misstated or things that are stated in a somewhat confusing manner. Um, and that, that's important for us to kind of step through some of these and make sure that we're in agreement on the direction here. Um, so in terms of the sim similarities, there were some questions that came up out of the proposals in terms of what we even mean by the concept of entities to some extent, um, and a little bit around virtual metadata in terms of some of the comments. Um, I think there's a lot more that is similar about the two proposals than is necessarily different. And the key difference is really around relationships, um, which we'll get into a little bit more. Uh, but we, but before we jump into that, I did want to kind of talk through some of the, the ideas of, of what I tried to state here, but maybe didn't state so clearly. And at least where my head has started to move in terms of entities and items and what the relationship is between these two objects. Because um, as Mark noted here, it's sort of a confusing concept that we have that we're kind of suggesting that there's both this idea of entities, which are always items, but you can also create items that are not necessarily entities. 
um, and the, 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 the concepts here between the two. Um, and I think there has been some good discussion here uh, that has kind of uh, solidified down on what Mark and Paulo has sort of noted here that um, Mark had noted that it sounds like an item has become an entity and one type of entity is an item. Um, but I think that I would try and, I think the, the confusing concept here in my mind here is that we have two words for things that are very, very similar. Um, and that's something we may need to think forward as we're moving forward here. I don't know that we need to solve that today, but the fact that um, even people with our own group don't know what the difference between an entity and an item is a problem uh, that I'd kind of note. I think I've been thinking of them always as that they're almost one and the same and that um, entities are kind of basically typed items. So it's an item that has a stronger type. So it's an item that represents an author. So now it's an author item um, or an item that imp implements a journal. So now it's a journal item or a journal issue item. Um, so entities are kind of typed items or the opposite way of thinking of it is that items become more like generic entities. So they're sort of untyped entities. They're things that um, that are not really represented as a specific type within your DSpace instance. So it's not necessarily an author or even an article or a, a paper. It could just be some sort of generic object that does have metadata and that metadata is related to one or more files perhaps but it doesn't necessarily have a strong type that causes it to have a specific behavior uh, within DSpace. So I don't know if anybody else, anything else to add here in terms of trying to clarify this or anything that folks want to add in in terms of um, this, this topic at all? Yeah, I think you gave a good definition, Tim. And um, I would just add that you need to make an, an entity or give an item a type if you want to give it a relationship. That's basically um, the key. And you can have regular items that don't have relationships and that thus don't need an entity type per se. Um, but I also do think that this, that in itself is more something we should think about in, in the overall communication at the end of um, the whole working group and when we present it to the rest of the community. Um, but it's not crucial or key to advance the discussion that's currently at hand. Uh, yeah, I, I agree, but I also think that it's worth us clarifying the the goals here of what we're trying to achieve because I think that helps bring us to more clarity around the discussion because there's one thing that you said there, Levin, that I'm not sure that I actually agree with, which was probably a simple thing that you thought was very obvious that that um, that uh, that an item needs to have a type in order to have a relationship. Um, I'm actually wondering whether that's the case in my head because that's a key difference that I think is somewhat between these two proposals uh, to some extent is that in um, it depends on which proposal you're looking at. In the proposal that is the bi-directional relationships are stored in the database, it does seem like those are only affect, those relationships only exist for entities. Uh, but in the other proposal where it's a one directional um, relationship and the, the uh, relationship is stored in metadata, I see no reason why those relationships couldn't also be for items. That's correct. But also in the, the, the first proposal, if you would define your generic item entity type as being an entity type, like Mark would suggest, mm -hmm. um, then you also can have that. Uh, you can have it with any quote unquote item. So. Right, but I, I guess my point is, is that it's good for us to clarify what we sort of mean by these two concepts because it actually does have an effect on how you look at these proposals. Um, that's, that's kind of, I guess, what I'm getting at. Um, so I guess I'm curious, does anybody else have questions on this? Does this seem to clarify the fact that entities and items are very similar? Items or entities are basically sort of a, um, typed items or items or generic entities um, or we could even define that a, one type of entity is an item, which is just the generic type of an entity. Um, does this sort of make sense? Are there areas that are not clear in folks' heads that you'd like to talk through this more? If not, I'll move along. Uh, are you able to hear me there? Yes, yeah, Greg. Hi, how are you? Uh, look, I'm, I'm new to the group and uh, new to the project. 
um, but I do have an opinion on this, and that would be that I I expect that records, uh, if we think of items as records, um, would have to have their own entity type, as it were. So I would say that a default item or a record, as we know it now, would become a an entity record, and then it can have relationships with entities of authors or entities of journals, uh, entities of other records, and so on. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I understand what you're saying. So essentially, yeah, that, that everything needs to be treated sort of equally, so they become one and the same. They're all entities, and that default entity type, uh, whether it's called a record or an item, uh, would still be a type of an entity. So that everything exactly. Is so, so, so all items have an entity type, um, and there is just we just need to define an entity type that fits in with the with items as we know it today. Yeah, sorry, I'm I'm writing down this as a note. I I like that that point. All items have a entity type. Would others agree with that sort of proposal? I think the interesting question if all items have one entity type or if an item can have multiple entity types. I'm not really sure what those possible answers mean for us, but I think that's something we really have to 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 think about properly and make 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 clearly to everyone from the beginning. And I think it's a, it's a complicated question with a lot of things hanging hanging on that. Yeah, um, I, I would I would lean. It's a good question, Pascal. I would lean towards every every item would have a single entity type initially, just because we're we're building a lot and we're we're talking about building a lot into the concept of what the entity type means. So, like, you might have a different sort of display. Uh, for that specific entity type, different sets of metadata are required for that entity type. Um, and I think trying to have an item act as multiple entity types gets a little complex early on. It may be that we go that direction in the future, but I guess I'm wondering if we should start with all items have a single entity type. Yeah, but for example, if you're thinking on journal issues, it might happen that you want to have a journal issue that is like our old entity item type, and that is also a journal issue. So I cannot, I'm not sure right now if the, I, I would lean to all items can have one type only as you, but I'm a little bit afraid that it's not predictable currently if that will work out or not. On the right. other side, as I mentioned in one of the documents, I would love to see that the um, entity type is not just in the metadata, but really as a single, either as a single table or as a, as a column in the, in the item table. And both questions relate to each other, of course. Right. I think somebody else was, was about to say something there as well. Yeah, I, I, sorry, it was, it was me. Um, I was adding that, that you, you also could, could have a, um, an absurd type, like a person is also a publication and that's, that doesn't make any sense. Uh, if uh, you have an entity and, and that entity could be a person, and, a, and a, a publication at the same time does that, that doesn't mean uh, make any sense. So you're saying that you would lean more towards the single entity type as well. All items yes. have a single entity yes. type. Follow. Yes, okay. and and following the the Pascal um, suggestion, I think it should be on the, the item table, the the type of the. And I see that, uh, Susanna, you have your hand raised virtually. Did you have something to add here? Uh, yeah, it's uh, cultural before being technical. I mean, an entity is an entity. By definition, it is something unique, something that exists apart from other things. Having its own independent existence is uh, the definition of the Cambridge Dictionary. Uh, what I would say here is that if you are one entity, you cannot be another entity. Uh, in the beginning, at least, I would keep it uh, simple because it's already very complex to solve the uh, organization of entities like this. 
And I would also say that we should keep in mind that the entities are not just the entities of the Chris domain for this space, but they may be the entities of another completely different domain, such as the uh, cultural heritage or um, yeah, something uh, belonging to museums, collections, or uh, other contexts where the entities are completely different. Uh, so in principle, uh, I think that every, everything in this space should be an entity, or an entity that is configurable according to a specific domain, but just one entity. Mm -hmm. So the, the choice is made in advance. When you adopt the new D space, and the new D space provides you the opportunity to configure entities. You configure your entities according to your domain, and then each item in the uh, in your repository belongs to some specific entity. You may maybe create one entity by default, and uh, all the rest should represent your domain. That's how we can make this space Chris really uh, neutral with respect to the context where it is adopted and extend its uh, uh, reach. Susanna, so in DSpace Chris, an entity can only be of one type. Yes, DSpace Chris, uh, I mean, the Chris domain, uh, if you map it onto the serif model, for instance, has a precise definition of entities. So a publication is an entity, uh, a researcher is an entity, and so on. And I think each domain should define their own entities. Okay, so it sounds like we're at an agreement point here. So I'd like to probably move this along. So I have down here, and this is important that we can note as a definition, that um, all items have an entity type. They have a single entity type, um, at least initially, uh, for, for DSpace 7. And then, um, and then there's that concept that both, uh, um, both uh, Pascal and um, uh, Paulo mentioned briefly, that just around where we store that entity type, um, which we can get into a little bit later in terms of being on the item table or however we want to represent that. Um, but that seems like a good definition to me. That's, that's a little bit clearer than we've had written in anywhere else. Um, so thank you, Greg, as well, for kind of, kind of a, a clear, clearly stating that as a proposal. So I'm going to move along here just in the essence of time because I think there's a lot of other concepts we want to get into. But that seems like a good starting definition for where we can go here. Um, okay, so you still have my screen up. Let's see. I'm going to just step through here. So I'm going to skip over these other sim similarities here um, between the two proposals because it's, it's mostly around the fact that we're using items here. Uh, there was some discussion here around virtual, <coughs> virtual metadata on entities. Uh, I'm not sure if we want to dig into this very deeply right now or if we want to move along, uh, but I know Levin had noted that he was worried that the that uh, uh, the second proposal around storing metadata or storing uh, entity relationships within metadata may not be able to implement virtual metadata as easily, but I am actually thinking that it, it's, it's similar. I added a note here around the similarities and some of these discussions literally happened just before this meeting, so I know you probably haven't had a chance to, uh, to read through this, but this might be one that I'd suggest tabling unless anybody wants to add a note onto this briefly or note anything. I'll pause momentarily if there's anybody has a quick comment. Okay, then I'm going to jump into the, the other. Uh, I'm still yeah. unmuting. So the comment oh, is not so much about that virtual metadata is not supported, but that virtual metadata is linked to a specific metadata field. So like, let's say you have an item and you have a relation with an author um, that you can't take other fields than DC contributor author to populate with virtual metadata. Um, so it's not that virtual no. metadata is not there, but that it's limited to a metadata field <clears throat> that the authority control is connected to. Um, and, um, and that's in one direction, not in the opposite direction. Yeah, I, I have already replied on to doc. Uh, is not true actually uh, because the virtual metadata um, proposal that I had in uh, the proposal two is how the virtual metadata are already implemented in this space, Chris. And actually, you can check in the out of box configuration that from one single metadata you can get 
how many information as you want from the LinkedIn, uh, the LinkedIn okay. entity. So if you have a metadata that linked to a person, you can get uh, the ORCID, the, the Scopus ID, uh, the department, and, and so on. If you are linked to a journal, you can get uh, international serial number, the publisher, and so on. So there is no such limitation. I have also linked to the code where you can see that. Okay, so I'd like to move along here because I think this digs pretty deep in. So maybe we'll, we'll, um, we'll, we should get into some of these other differences. But I, I believe that I didn't see the same limitations either when I was looking at some of the code. So unless I'm overlooking them as well, um, I think we should move along and, and get more clarity maybe offline um, if we want to get into specific examples to share on this. Um, so I'm going to move down into some of the the differences here. So as a reminder, uh, proposal number one is really about storing uh, relationships um, in a bi-directional fashion in database tables. Um, and I know, Levin, you know there's more than two database tables. I was trying to simplify it here because the relationships are only really stored in two. Um, because uh, we basically, you're, the, the proposal here is to have a relationship definition, um, that, that actually stores the specific uh, relationships, the relationship table that stores the specific linkages, excuse me, and, re and the relationship type, which defines types of relationships um, that are more configurable. Um, and so this, in this uh, proposal, the, the relationships are really kind of in that database layer and the linkages are quite strong um, in terms of being able to actually um, easily find um, the, the related uh, entities or items uh, at the database level. Um, and so, <clears throat> so that brings down into um, some of these advantages in terms of them, them being strictly defined and configured. Uh, they're stored at the database level, which means that um, the database structure uh, can, or the database um, rules can actually do things like clean things up or it may even throw errors when uh, you're deleting something that is still linked to something else. So it's kind of a strong relationship um, in terms of really kind of linking together two, two objects at that database level. Um, I'm not sure, so let's see. Uh, were, are there any questions about that concept just at a high level? So I'm kind of, I've only covered like these first two bullets here want to make sure that others um, understand uh, the, the, the proposal here at a high level. And I see we've got some comments down here that have come in. Oh, and Andrea, thank you. You're adding some, some notes into here. Okay, that the relationship type is, is strictly defined and configured in both approaches, depending, it's just a different place where you're configuring it. Um, deleting an entity will clean up its relationships because of that strong typing. Um, and as Andrea, as you noted, there's, uh, that may not always be what you want or expect. Um, and I agree with that, that, that we would have to be careful about that because we've actually hit issues with these same sort of strong linkages in the database in the past. Um, uh, and I guess the, the best example I can think of is when we used to have like browse by tables uh, in the database layer and things like communities to items, that relationship from the community level down to the item level. Sometimes those strong relationships between things that were not directly related uh, caused us difficulty um, in actually managing um, the database layer and actually deleting things. Yeah, I, I agree about that, but I, I want to make um, an example that is okay. uh, very clear. For instance, we have a similar issue with item and submitter. Sometimes we want to delete any person. This is also a strong requirement in uh, GDPR, for instance. And uh, we will need to take care of that. And currently we can solve eventually uh, nullifying the submitter in the item uh, table. But if we go for a relation uh, table, you will uh, not able to uh, nullify the, uh, the ID of the entity because you will lose all the information. So the difference here is if you have the authority, 
control into metadata value, you can just remove the authority key and you keep your information. You got the minimal information that is uh, the author name and the position that this string will uh, take in, uh, in the authors. In, uh, in the other proposal, you don't have such, uh, um, such solution. Unless that you will go to implement something very, very similar to the metadata value in the relation table. And this brings to me to the question why we need uh, another uh, most identical uh, structure. Okay, yeah, it's good to bring up the idea that GDPR, I think, is a good example for us to be considering here um, in general. Um, so I, I agree that, that that we do need to be careful about being able to delete things um, uh, to align with with uh, with uh, uh, standards in various countries or, or rules and regulations in different countries. Does somebody else want to add something there real quick? Is it whether you will automatically uh, delete relations when you're deleting an entity or whether you refuse to delete an entity because you have relations present to that entity is actually in a design choice. So it doesn't necessarily have to be designed to delete, uh, automatically delete relationships. And I wouldn't advise doing that either. I would rather say, okay, we have this list of relationships present. What do you want to do with them before you're going to delete this entity? So we don't have any dead links, we don't have any automatically deleted relations, but we have a clear user who can make a choice about what happens to those relations. And yeah. on top of that, if you decide to delete the object itself, like for example, the author, part of that method could be take whatever virtual metadata configuration you have and place that in the DC contributor field as a text value rather than, um, and then just you know leaving it there. I I don't. I mean, I I don't want to bring this to a too high level kind of discussion. But I mean, an entity relationship model um, by definition is what a database was built for, and we're talking about 1970s here. And I find it a little strange that we're having a discussion of, okay, we're going to build an entity relation model in DSpace, and we're discussing should we do it in a technology that is built for entity relation models, or should we do it in a solar search index? And I'm, I'm currently still struggling quite a bit to see why we would deviate from what's been the default to solve this kind of problem since you know, the early 70s and why we're going into all of these smaller details and discussing things, why it's is good or bad to have stronger relations, bi-directional relations, etc. I mean, I, I'm still really struggling to see the point of deviating from what is typically used to solve this problem to go to something that is not typically used to solve this problem. I think, yeah, and that's a good point. Leave in, and maybe that's worth us digging into because I think what it what it gets at is what is what are we talking about when we're talking about relationships? Because um, I think that because we we just already defined what is a what is an entity and ha that all items have an entity type, a single entity type, um, and maybe that's worth us digging in here a little bit on what do we mean about relationships? Because I think that's one of the key differences that I see here. I agree with you that. If relationships are these sort of, um, excuse me, let me mute a phone call here. Um, if relationships are are these uh, strong sort of linkages between between uh, database tables, then I think you're completely correct that that's that's what a database is built for. Um, but I think what the second proposal is actually showing is that uh, relationships could actually just be considered more of an index of data in your database. It could be considered more of a browse bias. If you're thinking like an author profile page, it could more be like, um, it, it could be this, it's the similar concept of having a, um, a browse by a specific author um, and having things pop up in that browse by index. And then if you're indexing things properly, then things just pop into that author's page without you having to have strong linkages between this author is related strongly to all these other things. 
Uh, yeah, but, but you know you what I mean? Yeah, but you can have both. So um, if, if you're only going for that weaker linkage, you're actually saying, okay, let's not support or let's make support for certain use cases a bit more difficult um, because we assume that, you know, this subset of use cases is going to be more common. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm not sure if that is necessary. Um, you know, you can have a, a lot of these things are also indexed in solar as well. Like the, the link I put there at the bottom of uh, point number four is that you're using the solar regular discovery index um, to, to get all of the items that are, or entities that are related to that author. So you can have that same advantage without limiting yourself to a certain subset of use cases. That. Sorry, I, I need to clarify one thing because okay. I think that is misleading to say that one approach is based on database and the other on solar. It's actually not true. Both approach store all the information into database and this is the natural choice for this space because this space always keeps the information in uh, uh, into the database. The only difference is that the second approach is uh, uh, a bit less uh, hard in the, uh, in the linkage. So it's, it's a bit more uh, open. It's, to me, it's very similar to when we uh, decide to have metadata in a key value table structure instead then have several columns on the item uh, on the item table so both are on the database of course but if we have meta uh, key value we can add additional metadata we are more flexible if we decide for the real database way that should be have additional column it will be a different story so we decide to use database to store all the information because this is the way that the space go and the difference between the space and fedora for instance but our domain don't allow us to have so strong relation because not all author will be entities not all journal will be entities and uh, we will have author that sometimes are people and sometimes are working groups sometimes are something else. So I think that we need a more flexible approach that is like key value. Yeah, but I mean, the, the, the database model does not limit it to, to, I mean, what you're saying is that you can't have text values and author entities at the same time with the, the database model. That's, that's not correct. You can have it. We have implemented some examples to show that. Um, the same goes for having an org unit as an author. It just depends on what relation you define between an org unit and an author. And, and those are not limitations. Uh, yeah, I don't think there's limitations. I think either of these approaches can work, to be honest. Um, I think the question is um, really which, which is our first step here? So I think there's one, one difference actually. Okay, Pascal. Some models I can make. Uh, I, I, all rela uh, relations uh, relations are bidirectional, and the other one I also can have unidirectional links. And if I put links from both directions to each other, then they are bidirectional again. So one model can do uni unidirectional; the other can do only uh, bidirectional. Is that right or not? Uh, I, I don't see that as being correct. I see the limitation on the second possibility is that you could only do unidirectional relationships, whereas yeah, you, with you, the database you can do bidirectional and unidirectional. If you put if you put links in uh, relationship in, in both directions, you have a bidirectional relationship. So that's also not right. Yeah, I think you're. So yeah, I think it's misstated here. This is um, so proposal two. Um, by default would always be unidirectional, but you can link them both ways. It requires duplication of metadata. So you could do bidirectional and proposal two, but you'd be duplicating the metadata on both um, 
on, on both entities, essentially. So you'd be making one, one unidirectional link from one entity to the other, and then the other entity, you make a unidirectional link back the other way. So you can achieve bidirectionality. It's just that you're doing it, and um, each link is one way. Um, so you'd have the two links. Yeah, and there's also no disadvantage of actually using bidirectional. There's never a disadvantage of having that in place. You just follow the links in the direction that you want to use, but there's no need to follow the links, all the links, or display all the links in, in, in a direction that's not useful in your use case. So that's one of the things that, where we implement an example as well, where you have an author having a few hundred publications. You don't have to display all those publications on an author page. You can just as well not display them and use a search instead. So that's one of the samples that we have been working on in the past two weeks. And when, when you have like a strong hierarchical structure, like for example, if you want to represent the, the, the hierarchy of organizational units and you have, um, and, and you want to show the part of the tree or things like that, querying in, is, is much easier and, and, and better in, in a database solution rather than in, in something that's based on a, on a sore. I could comment there. Uh, at the ETH, we have a huge organizational database system. And to best uh, show that tree and to best browse that tree, we must be able to go bi-directional. We must be able to say that this institute is a child of this other department. At the same time, we need to be able to say that the institute is a parent of all of the entities that are underneath that. And these are these are entity relation, also inter-entity relationships that happen within the entity type. Uh, I I can't see any logical way to manage that without having a donor database. So so let me uh, poke at that. One, one second, one one second. The, the second proposal is not out of the database. It's also in the database, as as um, Andrea already made clear. And I think so. I think that the difference between unidirectional and bidirectional relationships is with unidirectional relationship, you can type it. You can say this is a child of, with a bidirectional uh, relationship, you always have these left, right parts of the relationship, which I find much more complicated than to say, this is a child of, this is a parent of, you know? So I don't think you, you can achieve what, what you just described. And I think there are small differences, but there are differences between both approaches. But to do that in the in, in the way that you're talking in the second proposal, we would have to have um, duplicate metadata on the child. We would have to have a relationship stating that this is a child of the other entity. And then on the parent, we would have to have again the same metadata saying that this is a parent of the other entity. But um, with the database, if we have just a relationship and we say that there is a relationship between these two entities, and then we have that linked to the relationship type and the relationship type is in a separate table in the proposal there. So that that table relationship type, sorry, could be as is parent of, but because you've got that just in one place, we don't have any redundancy of that metadata and we're able to also look it up in the other direction if we want to. We can say, um, bring me back the second half of that relationship. And I know that if they're the child, then the parent is the other one. I don't see no, that we have duplicated metadata because I think it's another thing to say this is a child of and this is a parent of, then there's a relationship between two, one is a child, one is a parent, and we have some life left and some right entities in the relationship. So I don't see that's duplicating really metadata. Yes, we have two relationships. One saying this is a child, the other one is a parent. This is the direction. Yeah, but and it's also worth noting that that you could still do these lookups in either option using like solar and technically you could do them via a somewhat complex database query it's just not a, uh, it's not a, there's no relationship table but even in proposal number two if you know that there's a parent to child if you say you no know, one object is the parent of another you can find the child relationship via index in solar or by just querying um, across the metadata value that stores that parent relationship. So you can find what are my, what are the parents that link to me, essentially. 
It's the, so it's still possible to get the same sort of information. It's just a matter of how strong the link is and which direction the link sits. The problem with doing that in a database is of course, one, it's not really linked to the object. And the other thing is that there's no indexing. This is gonna be extremely slow to query the authority column for uh, all the items that have this specific ID in there. Right, well, that's why I was saying you normally use solar, but you could do it in the database if you wanted yeah. to. Yeah, correct. Not be indexed. Yeah. yeah, but the index is there yeah. for that speed, obviously. Uh, Go ahead, Andrea. Yeah, I just want to note that Mark uh, put a very similar comment into the document, mm -hmm. and I have also replied that, uh, mm -hmm. of course, we can do the query as the way that you described him. And if the performance are an issue, we can always improve the authority framework to introduce a separate column for internal authority that will be indexed um, with a foreign key as in the other solution. So there is not really difference on that uh, between the two uh, solutions. Uh, if we talk about uh, um, visualization, keep in mind that you will always go for solar instead of database. There is no real use case where you want to represent any relation that is not in the direct, in the direct verse. If you want to visualize an inverse relation, you always want to have pagination and sorting. And you can for sure have pagination on the database, but if you want to have sorting on metadata, this will not work or will be very slow on the database. So this will mean that whatever solution we'll decide, whatever approach we will use, the reality will be that every query will go on solar. Yeah, we found in general, I think with DSpace, we've moved more and more querying to solar. Solar is used for all of that sort of stuff until you get down to the item level. And that's where we start to deal with a uh, database sometimes. Yeah, Go ahead. I don't think that that is correct. Like if, if you would click on the possible advantages to consider the link under number four, you can see, I mean, it's, it's still indexed in the regular solar search index. And so you can totally get to, so those two links show how it's indexed. First one is do a search where you say, give me the relation as author of publication for a particular publication. So if you, you click on that, you see, a search with all of those, uh, all the items that are linked to that author. And the second link there um, is that exact search integrated into an item page. So if you have it in the database as bi-directional relations, which has its advantages, and if you have it in the solar index, then, I mean, those are the, 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 the current DSpace standard ways to have, um, uh, to, 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 to query and to, to, to page through these results. And you can see that it's perfectly fast. And I mean, I, I don't see why we would all of a sudden start pulling all of that into authority control. Um, to be honest, I, I see it in, in a different way here. Because I, I, I have, the more I've looked at these over and over again, I'm going to say that I'm, I'm starting to lean more towards using authority control. Um, and the reason why for me, is that I don't think this is a standard pattern in DSpace anymore because I think we've broken this pattern a lot over time in terms of storing relationships in the database level because we keep hitting issues with, uh, with managing content in the database and querying the database so that we've started to rip more of these things out of the database like relationships from community to item and even browse indexes and things of that nature that we've started to rip out of the database and move to solar uh, because we've found that solar provides us a yes. whole lot more speed. That's the point. If, if, you, if you show the page, it is in solar. It is in no, solar. No, I agree. Not I agree. In authority control. I'm so just it saying that. follow the, the normal pattern of DSpace. In authority control, it doesn't follow the normal pattern of DSpace. I would actually disagree there again. Because I think that the thing that I, so I want to hear everybody's opinion here and see what you think. But the thing that I'm starting to see here, and as I look into this, because we're running out of time, I'm just going to jump into this. What, what I'm starting to realize myself is that, first off, um, our definition of entities as being all items have an entity type essentially means to me that 
we don't necessarily need to even call these entities. We're just creating typed items. Um, that's all we're doing. We're, we have items that all have a type. Um, that's the first point I want to make. The second point, though, is that if everything is an item and we're just typing these things and treating them as entities now, um, then in a way, we actually are creating more of a, a, a strong internal authority uh, for what these things are. Uh, and that's where authority control to me starts to actually make sense because we're starting to treat our UUIDs as the authoritative version. So we now have an authoritative author for Tim Donahue and it's represented as an item in our D space. And that item has a UUID and that is its authority record. And therefore other items can link to it via its authority record because that is the authoritative definition of what does Tim Donahue mean. Um, and so in that way, it starts to seem like an internal authority to me, where now we have an authority system that can act on internal objects or it can act on external authority records in ORCID or whatever via identifiers. And the identifiers that we want to use for ours could be UUID, it could be whatever we want to use. But that is where it has started to make more sense to me that this is not a breakage or a misuse of authority. It's just a sort of a redefinition of what does authority mean to DSpace? Does DSpace allow to have its own internal authorities or does DSpace only have external authorities? Um, so that's what I'm just gonna say about that. I, I, I will note that I think that I've actually started to come around to proposal two. It was not on my radar at the beginning, but through a week of thought and looking at this in more and more detail, um, I'm starting to lean heavily there unless I can understand the reasons why we need this strong relationship in the database. So, so two, I'll just note two, that. Two, two notes on that. Um, sure, go ahead, Ben. Convince me. Uh, That's what you're here for. First thing, well, the authority control is really just plain text. So that implies that you, well, what you end up doing is you'll break links and if you're not gonna uh, have actual labels duplicated you're gonna lose data if you just delete uh, for instance a person object then you have a link to an author and well it's a link to an id that doesn't exist anymore with a zero text value because you didn't want any duplication of 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 the labels so that's that's just gonna end up with dangling links and loss of data and why, why would those point, links be dangling? Why would we not clean them up in Java code? Like if you're going to delete, like if I'm, if I'm represented well, in, the, in the database as Tim Donahue as an entity and I delete the Tim well, Donahue entity. Deleting them in the, in the code would be possible as well. But the, the point in general is if you just delete a linked entity when, when you're using authority control, then you'll have to depend on searches in solar to verify whether there's any other item linking to this particular item to verify what we're going to do about it and it's going to be a much higher risk of breaking functionality in your repository that and this phase you could do really the, fast also on the database you don't need solar for these queries you could do the same thing on, on on the database that's correct but there's just going to be a much higher risk to break data and to really end up with an item with an author that's gone and you don't have a clue what that author ever was unless you're going to go back to your backups. And the second thing about removing uh, database tables, um, we did that in particular for everything that was searched and browse related because if you're talking about searching and browsing, we have a better solution compared to doing all of that manually in a database. Solar is a search index. So definitely, yes, it, uh, on removing everything for search and browse from the database uh, to Solar. So that was a good move. But that doesn't imply that every relation in the, should no longer be present in a database. Because where do we end up? Do we want e-persons no longer to be connected to an item? Do we want collections no longer to be connected to an item? Do we want to delete all of those relations and move them to regular metadata. There has to be, there's, there's a difference between building database tables for searches and having risks when you delete something there where this, the relation itself is not really important. It's just used to optimize searching versus having an, a relation that's really important where you don't want the relation to be gone just because 
one of the endpoints is no longer supposed to be a person object, but rather a string value, for instance. And one, well, third thing I was, I was actually saying, I was only going to say two things, but um, for the relations between uh, where, uh, use case where we have those bidirectional relations uh, and are very important is it was uh, Greg's use case for the or, uh, parent and child relations. I, I noticed that that was missing when we're talking about we can just query for all the child relations in solar and we're just searching them and sorting them in solar and paging them. But I see building an organizational structure in your UI, you don't want paging, you don't want sorting, you want to display the, 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 all the children and you want to be able to determine the order of the children. So there's use cases that are still important for that. Oh, so I, go ahead, Andrea. It's nice to see the, the example of organization because actually uh, in this space, organization was represented as community and collection and one of the most recent issue on performance that we hit was exactly on community list. So it's not true that you can say you don't want to have pagination on that. And in the space seven, instead we say any relation need to be paginated. I don't want to deal anymore with performance issue. So you need to paginate everything. This is the, uh, this is the reality. Uh, another so the point relationships in the database are actually also paginated, but you can choose not to use that stuff because because the well because we're working with the DSpace Seven REST, it, it's already paginated by default, of course. But the point was particular: we don't want searching to display all of those children. We want to be able to display them in order. Uh, I still don't see the point, which is the difference between the two. You can do uh, in both. Uh, another point, maybe... Sorting versus determining an order. So a sort is saying, I want to sort them by name, but an order is saying, I want to display in the order that they have been uh, entered or, or in a manual determined order. That's, that's what I was pointing out because for organizational units, you don't, it depends a bit on the institution, but not every institution wants to display them sorted by name or by date or something like that. But you can have always some metadata that defines the sort, or you can have an extra uh, table that means an additional feature that we can uh, discuss in uh, version eight, maybe about how to maintain list of preferred uh, publication, preferred uh, everything about a researcher. This is something that exists in the space Chris is done just using the authority framework. So it's not something that is prevent or uh, inter approach to. Uh, I would like to, to move to, uh, to move ahead to discussion. I just uh, see another major benefit. Uh, I just noted now, uh, so I want to share with you and say what do you think. Uh, using the authority framework, by the way, uh, you will be able to link uh, also community collection, stream, and other space object, e person, and so on to entities. And this is something that you cannot do with the with the other approach without right special code. And this could be uh, an additional benefit, I think, because you can have entities for subject classification, entities for people, you can link a B-stream to a specific uh, people or a community to a specific people and, and so on. So I think this is another uh, advantage that is really important to discuss. Well, if there's any use case for that, there's of course nothing that prevents the first solution to do that because we're just talking about DSpace object IDs and all of those have a DSpace object ID. So there's nothing that prevents us to do that, but we didn't have any use cases for that so far. So no attention has right. been spent on that. Well, I think, I think that's, so we're running short on time here. I think that's the main point that I would like to point out here too, is I feel like that either of these solutions can meet all the use cases we've come up with so far. I have yet to see a use case that really is a stickler that like, and by that I mean, that is 
that one situ that one proposal meets and the other one can is completely fails to meet. Um, and maybe I'm not understanding all the use cases properly, but even like the parent child relationship, the organization relationship, I don't see the blockers there, but maybe it's worth teasing out what what that use case looks like in more detail, like what, what describe the use case more rather than how proposal one meets it, but just describe the basic use case so we can assure that we are meeting it with both both proposals. But I mean, if it comes to this too, and I think this is something that I don't remember who else has mentioned this, but if it, if both proposals meet all these use cases in some way, shape or form, it still seems to me like proposal two has a, a lead in terms of that it's less work to implement. It's basically we're using code that already exists um, and we're not using stuff that already exists and there will be fixes that have to happen, but it seems less significant to me than, than the amount of, uh, of changes that would have to happen in proposal one. Um, so I'd really like to understand these use cases that, that keep being pointed to that I'm, I'm not really getting the differences in. Uh, from uh, from my perspective, it's not necessarily just about the use cases, but um, a, a bigger role is future development um, and also just keeping up with industry standards. Uh, as uh, I think it was Ben or it might have been Lieben mentioned, uh, using a, relation, a relational database structure for managing these entity relationships is industry standard since the 70s and uh, I can just see problems with it. Oh, I was actually shocked when I learned for the first time two weeks ago that DSpace didn't have an entity structure behind it. Unfortunately, I hadn't come across that information until now. And I, I wondered how is it possible that we've gotten through six versions without having an entity relational uh, structure managed in a database like what's being proposed in uh, the proposal one. And as uh, the system that we have at the ETH now, um, Lehman will be able to confirm, we've spent a lot of money building a lot of workarounds and a lot of modules to make use cases work uh, with authority controls that would be far simpler implemented if we had an entity relational structure from the get go. Yeah, I understand that, Greg. I, I guess I, I wanted to understand what makes it simpler um, and what use cases make it simpler. And that, that's why I'm pointing at use cases, I think, is because I feel like we're, um, sorry, I'm screen sharing my calendar, I'm told. Um, let me stop screen sharing here. Um, uh, I need to know, yeah, I was checking to make sure I didn't have another meeting bumping up against this one. Um, I, need to, I, I need to better understand what are the the, the main points here between, um, between why this first proposal is that, it, what, what it meets that the other ones don't. And I'm still not understanding why relationships have to be that strongly typed within DSpace to achieve all the things that we wanna be able to achieve. But I, I'm totally willing to be proven completely wrong on that. And I understand that the idea of the industry standards point that relationships and, and a database layer, yes, those are industry standard to store relationships between database tables in that way. But I think it again goes to what we define as a relationship. Um, I'm not convinced yet, at least not 100% convinced that, that we need it strongly typed to that, to that level. Um, but I am totally willing to be convinced. I'm just starting to find myself leaning more and more towards that option too. Um, and I'd like to get a sense of why um, why why that would be a bad decision if we went that way but uh, i don't understand why what is different about a relationship between two entities in dspace than in other applications that is something that i have a problem understanding and if you redefine what is a relationship that means that you're limiting yourself to particular assumptions so i would like to know what are those assumptions and why um, do they apply to DSpace? Um, I think, I, I mean, I'm, I, I can't, I can't, it's hard for me to kind of put this all into words right here, but I think that my, my, in my mind, the data model of DSpace, what I'm noticing here in these two models is that the data model of DSpace actually could have been supporting this all along um, and actually already can support this at the level of if we if we go with 
with uh, proposal two, it seems like that model actually already supports the idea of being able to relate together items and being able to, uh, to start to build linkages between objects. And I guess what I'm wondering in my mind is why are the relationships within DSpace that much different from authority control? Um, <laughs> yeah, that's the same question, but, but thrown back, I mean. Yeah, um, it's the same thing, back at you. So I mean, I, I, I think that's the, the key point here is what are, what are we defining as relationships and why are they different from authority control? If we can clarify why it's different from authority control, then, um, then that will probably convince me to be totally frank. But, but just looking at how DSpace relates itself to external objects through ORCID and things like that that exist um, and other sort of systems, um, that's all done through authority control. I'm just trying to understand why, um, why an internal relationship could not be the same as authority control. What is the, the key use cases and needs and assumptions that I'm missing here? You know, does that make sense? Yeah, I, I mean, I think it's just a, a, a jump that's made in, in, in the, the reasoning. It's like, okay, we can have performance issues um, in certain cases when if we would uh, store it as bi-directional in a database, so let's move it to solar, where the approach we've taken before, like you said, with the browse tables is to have that also indexed in solar. And that's what proposal one also does. It keeps... Right. There's the strong um, linkage in the database, but if you need to query need to query it, you can go to solar and you have it in the standard solar index and not a second solar index, which already exists as a form of authority control. But I think I, I feel that that we're stretching the concept of authority control to do something that can be done through a relational database in combination with the regular solar index. So I think that we're you know, taking that performance case and make a jump to something that is a jump too far. I want to add uh, another perspective also. What will happen if we are wrong today with the decision? If we go for approach two, uh, approach one, we go to introduce new code, introduce new structure, we will make some change into the base. And if we need to go back, this need to be rolled back and restored and there will be discussion. If we go for approach two and we are not satisfied, no, no one stop us to make approach one into, as next step. So approach two don't have any overhead is almost here. We can start with that and if we are not satisfied, we can move to approach one. The opposite is not true. This just uh, delays the inevitable that we would eventually have DSpace going to the correct approach of relate, uh, entity relationships stored in the database. The other thing that I don't know much about the authority control, so I, I don't know whether it uh, works in exactly the same way as a relational database structure, but what I would say is that uh, I would be concerned about the redundancy of data and that uh, if we're not having it in, relationship, in a relational database uh, storage system that we're going to be, it's just not going to be normalized in a, an appropriate way. Yeah, it's still stored in the relational database, but it's not, um, yeah, it's not necessarily in a normalized database relationship structure, but a lot of our metadata isn't in that way either. Um, so, so yeah, I guess, yeah, it's, it's good points and well, well taken, Greg. Um, I'm noticing we're, we're over time here and we probably need to wrap this up. Um, I think what I'm gonna have to do here is we're gonna have to um, call a, another meeting here um, uh, d does next week work for people at this same time? Do I need to do a doodle poll? Any thoughts on meeting times? Because we could do next week at the same time, which would be October 2nd at, um, uh, what is this, 14 UTC is the time, which is uh, 10 a.m. Eastern. I can't, sorry. Okay. Perhaps Monday. Yeah, I can't do Mondays or Monday, this next Monday. Um, 
Okay, I'll do a doodle poll and send it out to everybody rather than keeping everybody online here. Um, and send it out on the Slack channel. Make sure you're on the entities uh, dash WG uh, Slack channel because that's where we're doing all other discussion. I'll, I'll get out a doodle poll and we'll call another meeting in the next couple weeks here. Um, I think that this, our key point of, of uh, disagreement is still around um, whether authority control is better used here or whether putting this in the um, in a relational table is the better way to, to manage relationships. So I think I'd like us to try and uh, dig deeper there on some of the, the use cases and purposes and needs and benefits of either approach. Um, because I admit I, I'm still not getting enough out of, out of the, the, the points made to understand why we need to go with one approach over the other myself. So maybe it's my only me, but I'm assuming it's, it's probably just as unclear to others as well. Um, so that's that would be our goal for the next uh, week or so. I will start to um, write up the notes from this meeting right after this meeting um, and update them in the Google Doc and see if I can figure out a way to structure that so that we can add more details and use cases and 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 um, and uh, description around why um, why use authority versus why use the relational tables. Uh, but thank you all for your time. I'll put up the recording uh, after this. Go ahead. One last yes, point. excuse me, Tim, very, very quick, uh, sure, couple of suggestions. The first one is that uh, uh, those who actively participate in the discussion uh, know perfectly well uh, both approaches, including the authority framework. If not, we are just discussing about a lot of useless things. And the second one is that uh, we fix a day and a time for the meetings, as it is uh, for all the rest of uh, uh, these space engagements, so we don't have to doodle it uh, every time. Maybe it's not every week, but when it is, it is on a precise day and time, so we know it in advance. Yeah, I agree. I was going to do that yeah. in that doodle yeah. poll, is to set that as our final date and time, because I, I, it has been difficult to find times to fit this in. Um, but I'll, I'll, uh, that'll be part of the doodle poll, is that we're going to have it on that regular time, just decided by the doodle poll, and we'll continue to have that on that schedule. But thank you, Susanna. Yeah, thank you very much. Yep. Okay, I'll let everybody go now. Uh, thank you very much for your discussion. Um, and we can bring this to Slack and Google Docs until our next meeting. And I'll stop the recording now and have a good rest of your day. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.